This video is on pediatric cardiology. We will examine congenital heart disease in terms of asynodic and synodic heart disease. In asynodic heart disease, the blood moves from the left to the right due to a shunt. So from a high pressure on the left to low pressure on the right. And this is usually due to a hole between the left and the right. So its common causes include a ventricular septal defect. And this can be associated with ventricular hypertrophy and pulmonary hypertension. This can lead to infective endocarditis if there is turbulent blood flow across the valves, aortic regurgitation, as well as arrhythmias. Arrhythmias result when there is abnormal electrical conduction. Normally, the pathway for electrical conduction is very specific and regulated. However, if there is a hole in the ventricle septum, the electrical messages cannot pass through this way, and that leads to abnormal electrical messages leading to arrhythmias. As you can have a hole in the ventricles, you can also have a hole in the atrium, and this is an atrial septal defect. There can be a combination, and this is known as a combined atrial ventricular septal defect. You can also have a persistent ductus arteriosus. Normally, the ductus arteriosus connects the aorta to the pulmonary vessels, but this normally closes. However, if it remains open, you have a similar idea of a high pressure to low pressure movement of blood from the aorta, which is high pressure, usually on the left, and then pulmonary vessels, low pressure on the right. But over time, when you have increased blood in the pulmonary vessels, this can lead to pulmonary hypertension, as the pulmonary vessels are not used to having so much blood, so much pressure. And this can lead to Eisenberger's syndrome, where the blood goes the other way, and this leads to a synodic heart disease. So an asynodic patient will not be blue, but in synodic heart disease, the patient will be blue. And this is commonly due to, to a right to left shunt. But remember, blood normally does not move from a uh, low pressure to high pressure. So there must be structural abnormalities in the heart leading to this blood movement. So this can be tetralogy of fallow, which is four main abnormalities. The first one is a ventricular septal defect then an overriding aorta, pulmonary valve stenosis, causing right ventricular hypertrophy as the right ventricle has to contract against a narrowed pulmonary valve. The other main cause is an Epstein's anomaly, and this is when the tricuspid valve descends into the right ventricle. Other causes include the trumpus arteriosus, where there is a single vessel out of the left ventricle. Normally there is two both the pulmonary artery and the aorta. But if this is joined, this is a truncus arteriosus. And finally, basically everything could be in the wrong place. And this is known as transposition of the great vessels, where the aorta comes from the right ventricle instead of the left ventricle. And the pulmonary artery comes from the left ventricle instead of the right ventricle. Investigations include ECG, looking for any arrhythmias, any signs of ventricular hypertrophy, pulse oximetry to assess oxygen saturation, echocardiogram to visualize any structural abnormalities, as well as a chest x-ray to detect secondary pulmonary congestion, as well as broadly visualizing cardiomegaly. Management includes surgical correction to address any abnormal underlying structures, as well as heart failure medications, any controlling hypertension, ACE inhibitors, sartans, or controlling arrhythmias. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, please tell a friend who may also find it useful.